tonight. Claiming the border. Israel forces claims control of a buffer zone along the border between Gaza Strip and Egypt. Weather forecast. Indian capital swelters through heat wave as temperature reported past 50 Celsius in Delhi. Deliberation begins. Judge excuses jurors ending first day of deliberations in Trump's criminal trial. Kitten rescued. Truck driver stops traffic to help police save kitten. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you're joining us on World News Tonight. We have a number of stories to update you on this evening and we start off with Israel claiming control of the Gaza-Egypt border zone. The Israel military claims to have taken control of the Philadelphia Corridor across the Gaza-Egypt border. The Israel government has warned the war would thus turn until the end of the year as Israel forces expand their offensive in Rafah in the enclave south. Israeli forces have taken control of a buffer zone along the border between the Gaza Strip and Egypt, giving Israel effective authority over the Palestinian territory's entire land border. <laughs> That's according to Army spokesperson Daniel Hagari on Wednesday. He said that Israeli forces had gained, quote, operational control over the so-called Philadelphia Corridor, which he said had served as the, quote, pipeline through which Hamas engaged in smuggling in the Gaza Strip on a regular basis referring to the armed Palestinian group that governs the blockaded territory. Hagari did not spell out what he meant by operational control, but an Israeli military officer earlier said there were, quote, boots on the ground along parts of the nearly 10-mile-long corridor. This video released by the Israeli army is said to show operations in Rafah. The area along Gaza's southern edge is the territory's only land border that previously was not directly controlled by Israel. Hagari said Israeli forces located some 20 tunnels along the corridor and that soldiers discovered and destroyed a nearly mile-long tunnel route in eastern Rafah containing, quote, large quantities of weapons with the entrance shaft found near the Rafah crossing. Egyptian state-affiliated media reported that a high-level Egyptian source denied Israeli reports on the existence of tunnels along the shared border. Hagari's statement came as Israel continued its deadly raids on Rafah in southern Gaza, despite an order from the International Court of Justice for a halt to attacks on the city, where half of Gaza's 2.3 million people had previously taken refuge. The United Nations says a million Gazans, most already displaced, have been forced to move again since Israel launched its assault on Rafah in early May. The assault has also cut off aid routes, worsening the humanitarian catastrophe from malnutrition and a collapsed health system. Delhi recorded its hottest day as temperatures soared to a record high of 52.3 degrees. City authorities have warned that water shortage might occur amid the scorching heat. However, light rains on Wednesday brought brief respite to the city. India's capital territory of Delhi recorded an all-time high temperature of 52.3 degrees Celsius on Wednesday, amid extreme heat that gripped the north and west parts of India. The temperature in Mangeshpur, in northwest Delhi, saw the hottest. Streets there were seen deserted and shops shut as people hid from the heat. The Delhi area has seen temperature of over 45 degrees Celsius before, but never as high as 52.3 degrees. But India's weather office said that Mangeshpur's temperature was an outlier even in Delhi, and it is examining the temperature sensor data to see what caused the anomaly. Jurors in Donald Trump's hush money trial finished their first day of closed door deliberations without reaching a verdict that would decide the fate of the only U.S. president to be charged with a crime. Jurors in Donald Trump's hush money trial finished their first day of closed door deliberations on Wednesday without reaching a verdict. They're tasked with weighing the evidence and testimony from the last five weeks in the first criminal trial of a U.S. president. It's unclear how long that will take. Mother Teresa could not beat these charges. These charges are rigged. The whole thing is rigged. Trump is charged with falsifying business documents to cover up a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels 
shortly before the 2016 presidential election. He has pleaded not guilty and denies wrongdoing. Justice Juan Mershon instructed the 12 jurors and six alternates not to rely solely on the testimony of star witness Michael Cohen, back up, back up, back up. who said he paid $130,000 out of his own pocket to prevent Daniels from telling voters about an alleged sexual encounter with Trump. Cohen said Trump approved the payoff. Trump's lawyers have argued jurors cannot rely on a convicted felon to tell the truth. Any verdict requires unanimous agreement by all jurors, and the judge will declare a mistrial if they are unable to all agree. A guilty verdict could upend the 2024 presidential race, but not prevent Trump from running or taking office if he wins. Trump is expected to appeal if convicted. While Trump faces three other criminal prosecutions, they're not expected to go to trial before the election. President Xi Jinping, speaking at the China Arab States Corporation Forum in Beijing, outlined a range of areas, including finance and technology, in which his nation can enhance cooperation with Arab nations. President Xi Jinping said war should not continue indefinitely. Justice should not be absent forever. And commitment to this two-state solution should not be wavered at all. She made the remarks as he delivered a keynote speech at the opening ceremony of the 10th Ministerial Conference of the China Arab States Corporation Forum. The Middle East is a land bestowed with broad prospects for development, but the war is still raging on it. Since last October, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict has escalated drastically, throwing the people into tremendous suffering, she said. North Korea launched multiple ballistic missiles on today's morning, with the latest provocation coming after the regime sent hundreds of balloons carrying excrement and trash across the border on Tuesday. North Korea launched around 10 short-range ballistic missiles on Thursday morning toward the East Sea from the western city of Sunan. Detected at around 6.14 a.m. by South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff, the missiles are estimated to have traveled around 350 kilometers. South Korea's military said it immediately captured, tracked and monitored the missile launches and shared related information with the U.S. and Japan. The JCS strongly condemned the launch, calling it a provocation that seriously threatens peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. The launch also comes less than two weeks since its last ballistic missile provocation. The regime's missile provocation follows the sending of hundreds of balloons with trash and excrement attached across the border on Tuesday night. On Wednesday, Kim Yo-jong, North Korean leader's sister, called the balloon sincere gifts to South Korea. In a statement distributed through the Korean Central News Agency, Kim mocked South Korea for saying that the distribution of anti-Pyongyang leaflets across the border to the north was freedom of expression. On Sunday, North Korea had warned it would retaliate against such actions by North Korean defectors and conservative activists in South Korea. Condemning North Korea for violating international law, the United Nations Command announced on Wednesday that it is conducting a formal investigation into the deployment of contaminated objects capable of causing harm. A UNC spokesperson said that they condemned any violations of international law that disrupt efforts to preserve peace on the Korean Peninsula. Meanwhile, as was forecast by South Korean experts, North Korea's missile provocation followed the failed launch of a spy satellite into orbit on Monday. The head of the United Nations Agency for Digital Technology, Doreen Bodgan Martin, stated that a world with unregulated artificial intelligence poses risks that keeps us all awake at night. It's the risks of artificial intelligence that keep us all awake at night. So much has been said about AI governance in the media, in academic circles, from startups to tech giants from local governments all the way to the United Nations, which recently adopted a historic resolution that recognized AI's potential to advance the SDGs. But ladies and gentlemen, at the heart of all of this is a conundrum. How do we govern a technology? How do we govern technologies if we don't yet know their full potential? Right now, the power of AI is concentrated in the hands of few too many. It is risky, and it is ethically precarious to be in this kind of position. 
Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Thailand's former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra will be indicted on charges of insulting the monarchy, as per the country's Attorney General. The controversial political leader who returned to Thailand last year after 15 years in exile is being charged over an interview he gave to a Korean newspaper nine years ago. Thailand will indict its former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat for allegedly insulting the monarchy. The complaint, lodged by the royalist military, had stemmed from an interview the influential tycoon gave to foreign media in 2015. The Attorney General's office said on Wednesday it had decided to indict Taksin on all charges. Other charges against him include violating a computer crime law. The 74-year-old denies wrongdoing and has repeatedly pledged his loyalty to the crown. Criticism of which is forbidden under Thailand's Lay's Majesty Law, which is one of the world's strictest of its kind. It's a setback to a political heavyweight whose loyalists are currently in government. Taksin would be the highest profile case among more than 270 prosecutions in recent years under the controversial law, which carries a maximum jail term of 15 years for each perceived insult of the royal family. Taksin's lawyer said a comprehensive defense had been prepared and his client would seek bail. He also questioned the authenticity of the video of the interview in which the alleged insult was made. The announcement of Taksin's indictment comes days after an opposition lawmaker and an activist musician were given jail terms for alleged insults of the crown. The palace typically does not comment on the law. To the U.S. next. Severe weather has forced travelers to stay put after the record-breaking Memorial Day holiday, causing more than 1,000 flights to be cancelled across the country and more than 6,500 delayed. This morning, incredible video showing the power of the winds at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. American Airlines saying several planes were impacted by gusts of up to 77 miles per hour. Surveillance video showing one plane pushed away from a gate by those wind gusts. Listen to the drama unfolding in air traffic control as the FAA evacuated two towers. We can't see anybody. We lost our ground radar. We can't see anything out the windows. We're getting out of the tower. It sounds like a freight train up here right now. American Airlines says the planes were not occupied and nobody was injured. The weather forcing travelers to stay put right after the record-breaking Memorial Day holiday. More than 1,100 flights canceled across the country. More than 7,300 delayed. Treacherous terrain and tribal unrest hamper search operations after a deadly landslide in a remote North Papua New Guinea village. The chances of finding survivors are nearly zero. Papua New Guinea's Yambali village is unrecognisable. Buried under two storeys of mud and debris over three to four football fields in area. Survivors of last Friday morning's landslide dig to try find the missing. But Mate Bagoshi from the United Nations Development Programme calls the search for the survivors a retrieval. It's basically a mountain that has fallen in their heads. Mourners gather on the landslide's perimeter. Death toll estimates have varied vastly, with the government saying more than 2,000 were buried alive. The UN estimates about 670 are missing. Community leaders have put the figure at around 200. Only six bodies have been recovered. Only one excavator has arrived at the remote northern village, but is not being used due to the unstable land. Rescue teams have been slow to reach the site because of treacherous terrain and tribal unrest in the remote area forcing the military to escort convoys of relief teams. Australia's High Commissioner said aid and personnel have begun to arrive, and the United States has also pledged half a million dollars to relief efforts. Authorities have raised concerns about the outbreak of diseases. Papua New Guinea's Prime Minister James Marape blamed extraordinary rainfall and changing weather patterns for the landslide and multiple disasters the Pacific Island nation has faced this year. Thousands of residents were ordered to evacuate the area over fears of further landslides, with 70,000 said to be impacted by the disaster.
And on the road to the White House tonight, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris held a rally in Philadelphia yesterday as part of an initiative to show up support among black voters in the battleground state. With your vote in 2024, we're going to make Donald Trump a loser again. That was President Joe Biden's message to a cheering crowd Wednesday at an historic boarding school in Philadelphia as he began a new push to court black voters in the state. It's a critical voting bloc that is showing signs of weakness for Democrats ahead of the November 5th election. Because black Americans voted, Kamala and I are president and vice president of the United States because of you. Black voters have historically turned out for Biden and Democrats and were a key reason he beat his Republican rival Donald Trump in 2020. But polls show they could be less supportive of him this year. And while Biden ran through a list of his achievements as president, alongside his VP Kamala Harris, he also took multiple swipes at Trump. It's clear that when he lost in 2020, something literally snapped in the sky. No, I'm serious. That's why January 6th happened, when he unleashed an insurrection. Now he's running again, and he's clearly unhinged. I've shown you who I am, and Trump has shown you who he is, and today Donald Trump is pandering and peddling lies and stereotypes for your vote so he can win for himself, not for you. Democrats have long banked on strong voter turnout in Philadelphia, and more recently its suburbs, to offset weakness in more conservative parts of Pennsylvania, a closely divided state that Biden narrowly won in 2020. The campaign's concern is not that the city's black voters will shift toward Trump, but that too many of them may sit out the election. This is Biden's third trip to Philadelphia and sixth to Pennsylvania this year, continuing a deep focus on the swing state where polling shows he narrowly trails Trump. A volcano in Iceland has bursted into life again. Extraordinary videos show the extent of the eruption, the fifth since December, with lava shooting 50 meters into the sky. Close up, it's mesmerizing as crimson red streams of lava spew into the air. A wider look reveals the scale of the eruption and the emergency it's caused. This is the moment the volcano in Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula started erupting for the fifth time since December. Within seconds, lava and smoke was pouring out. The chasm is now two and a half kilometres long and growing. The nearby Blue Lagoon Geothermal Spa, a major tourist attraction, was evacuated. Most of the residents in the town of Grindavik left in November, before the series of eruptions. But some remain and have been told to get out. The local mayor reporting concerns about the amount of lava flowing toward the town. So far, a wall built to protect it is holding. This is the eighth eruption in the Reykjanes Peninsula since 2021. Many scientists believe the region is now in a new volcanic era that could last decades, possibly centuries. We are just a few days away from the start of the T20 Cricket World Cup. Nearly 2 million people apply for tickets for this highly anticipated event. But now a terror threat has made unedged as the officials are mapping out a plan to keep spectators and residents safe. Tens of thousands of cricket fans are expected to flock to Eisenhower Park in less than a week for the Cricket World Cup. The June 9th match between India and Pakistan is expected to be the main draw. Tickets are going for several thousands and a billion people expected to watch. And now a terror threat looms over this huge event. ISIS supporters sharing an image of the cricket stadium with drones flying above on social media, listing the June 9th game urging violence. Nassau police declined to comment today, but a senior law enforcement official tells the NYPD is ramping up their presence at watch parties and are helping Nassau with security. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. A tiny kitten may have used one of its nine lives before being rescued by a kind officer from the Alashua Police Department. A kitten was saved thanks to a trucker and a cop. I just found a baby kitten in the middle of 441. 
cars whiz past, not noticing the tiny bundle of fur in the middle of the road. Florida's Alachua County Police Department says a truck driver helped to stop the traffic on a highway in order to keep the helpless feline from disaster. Body camera shows an officer walking down the road and scooping up the black and white kitten before radioing in about his adorable find. I just found a baby kitten in the middle of 441. After being removed from danger, the kitten went on another adventure, a ride in a police cruiser. According to authorities, the sweet kitten has decided to join the force. The little cat has found a forever home in the family of one of the police dispatchers. Well, that is all the stories we have to report to you tonight on World News. Tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Thank you for watching. Good night.